I'll take the lead. Got it. Look at all those Eggman's robots. Yeah. 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 Shit. 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 Welcome back to Sonic Weekly. Talking about Sonic Heroes this week? Maybe. Yeah, I guess we are. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, a number of things. Who knows? This is the beginning of the episode. Follow us. We will talk about what we talk about, and you'll be there. And we are so glad you're with us. Hey, I'm Grant. This is Sonic Weekly. We come out every seven days, four times a month. We talk about Sonic the Hedgehog, Sega, Sonic Team, Sega Saturn quite frequently. Sometimes Sega Dreamcast. And the author of the Rings of Saturn blog is one of our co-hosts. His name is Bo. Hi, Bo. Here we go, buddy. We're setting the stage for a hero's parade today. <laughs> and out of the shadows and into the spotlight, he's the star of the show, David the Lurker. Hi, David. Oh, hi, Grant. Hi, Bo. That's right. We're getting ready to annihilate, kill, kill, kill the competition <laughs> with uh, another great episode of Sonic Weekly. That is not an actual threat. Please do not constitute that as an act. Uh, I, I feel like a lot of times um, over over the year plus that we've done this show, we've made some threats and then immediately <laughs> retracted them. Uh, I'm not going to name any names. Right. Grant. Hey. But <laughs> I don't even remember. I don't know. I, I've forgotten. Yeah. Uh, no, nobody's written in and said, hey, don't threaten. So yeah. it's all purple water under the bridge. Uh, like the chemical plant zone, That's right. a famous recurring zone in Sonic. Hey, see, look, you're already getting Sonic references and you're not even two minutes into this episode. That's exciting. <laughs> uh, OK, so normally we would check the news. Right, David. But there's not right. there's no news. What news yeah. is there? No, I mean, there there isn't there isn't much news, uh, you know, like, hey, Angry Birds might be in these in Sonic Forces Mobile. That's fine. Didn't there wasn't there an Angry Birds uh, promotion uh, cross promotion with Sonic Dash many years ago? Oh, um, or am I misremembering that? I could never have possibly cared. So there's no. Oh yeah, yeah. That I would know that. And then oh, Sonic Crash Course is getting some updated rules. So if you ever what the hell is Sonic Crash Course? Oh, that's a that's a board game that uh, IDW made. Oh yeah. Uh, you can buy it at Target, I think. That's right. I did buy it at Target for the little figurines. Then I tossed away the board game. Whoops. You tossed the board. You didn't even try. Eh, it's in a box. Eh, it's in a box. <laughs> That's right. So if you really enjoy that tabletop game, I guess there's going to be new rules. Yay. Right. The the top story on Sonic Stadium right now is the long lost Sonic 10th anniversary media CD from Spain was uncovered. Hey, I'm interested in that. But, you know, <laughs> it's just some pictures, right? Yeah, I mean, it is mostly pictures. Uh. Let's see, it was posted by, it says Astro, Astro, Astro Seed P, posted on February 22nd on Twitter. So they were late to this news. <laughs> and that tells you what sort of news week we've got. They, they were just I, I, I'm glad we checked in with the news so the listeners know we didn't yes. record this beforehand so we'd have this evergreen content yeah. so we could talk about Sonic Heroes anytime. <laughs> no, we are live doing it. Yes. We are live. What about uh, over on Rings of Saturn? What's uh, last week on the previous episode, we got a, uh, a sneak preview treat. That was pretty exciting. What generation is the Saturn? The fourth generation? I think they call it the fifth generation. The fifth generation. You know, I called my blog 32bits.substack.com, but like if I do a Dreamcast game, am I like out of scope? I'm not sure. Yeah, I fucked up big time. Uh, anyway, so last time we talked about Scythe, the Konami shoot 'em up that is embedded in the dating sim Tokimeki Memorial Forever with you. And I also liberated the other sub game of Tokimeki Memorial Forever with you, which is a Twin B game, uh, so that'll be out pretty soon. Twin B, the famous Konami arcade shooter. Cool. And then, uh, you know, what am I going to do next after that? I I think I'm going to do a Clockwork Night thing. So you, you remember I joined the Clockwork oh, Night yeah. fandom earlier in the year. You are the uh, the Dune Messiah to the uh, Clockwork <laughs> community. Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> yeah. So Clockwork Night two, they introduced a new mechanic which is normally you're just running around as Pepper, but Pepper has a horse, or actually it's a donkey, I think. Mm -hmm. You can ride this horse donkey in some of the levels. And I thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you could not ride the horse slash donkey in those levels and just play them normally? Because it's like, it's like auto-scrolling and you got to like keep up with the camera and it's like, it's fine. But what if you could backtrack? Yeah, what if? Uh, so I made it happen. Hey! And uh, let me tell you, the, the Clockwork community, they're very happy about it all. Wow. Yeah, you really are. I mean, the, uh, this is what I mean when I, I was watching Dune Part 2. 
with my wife and I was like, I know you're not going to believe me, but I know somebody who had these, this exact same thing happen to him. Just, this is basically Bo's story with Rings of Saturn. He has freed the people, he has gathered the spices, and he is going to overthrow the emperor. Wait, what's the sandworm in this in this scenario? Oh yeah, the sandworm is uh, the 32X. <laughs> the 32X. I, okay, I thought it was like a sim, like symbolic version of death or something, or capitalism, or yeah, that, the Hollywood blacklist, whatever heavy-handed metaphors they they like. <laughs> that all makes more sense, but no, yeah, in fact, it uh, oh. it's the 32X. Right. Doesn't really make sense. Like it doesn't. It's not like analogous. Are you guys board game guys? I'm friends with board game guys, and in my twenties, we would go and we'd hang out and play six hour board game things with like crazy German import. Yeah, board game aficionados, and then you know, somehow that stopped happening when we all got like more serious jobs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that makes sense. Well, it's time to get less serious jobs. <laughs> Gone into clowning. That's not a very serious job. <laughs> right. That's a very that's a very silly job. Being a clown. <laughs> Could you imagine? No. Hmm. What if a clown but scary? Wait, what if a clown but sad? Oh. oh. Turn that clown upside down. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Outside they're smiling, but what if inside mm -hmm. the comedian is really sad? All right. Have you ever seen a clown in real life i think so yes have i have i told the story about ronald mcdonald on this show no <laughs> what <laughs> i don't think so okay okay very briefly in case i have told the story i don't think i have okay uh, I don't think so. so i'm in a, a 5k fun run for charity in 2013 <laughs> okay I'm, I'm running along i'm in i'm in second place in this race whoa it's very clear that all of the other 5k fun run people are just in it for the fun but there's like one other serious runner and me in this race. We are right, you're... gunning for the finish and everybody else is, you know, having a great time. So we're, we're way, way ahead of the pack and we come up to the finish line and we, we finish. He wins. I, I got no ending sprint. I, I'm, a, I'm more of a, a distance guy, but hats off to this guy. But so it's just me and him and the, the organizers of the race at the finish line and these mascots who were there to promote whatever the charity was. I think something about blind kids. Okay. The mascots are local hockey team mascot, Ronald McDonald, and local baseball team mascot. <laughs> and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we hear this like screeching tires and like horn honking and the sound of an engine revving. And then there's this car. It's coming like straight for the big parking lot where everybody's gathered for this event. And the car barrels head first into these like concrete barriers that are to prevent cars from going into oh my the place where people gather. Yeah, good job. Concrete barriers. They did their job here. Love you, concrete barriers. Yeah, great job. So glass and metal like raining down, like loud, loud crash. And the mascots all react in different ways. <laughs> the Ronald McDonald, he goes, oh, shit. And it's just like <laughs> hits, hits the deck, <laughs> runs. Ronald, you coward. Uh, local baseball team mascot has a little more composure and just like, you know, backs off slowly. And local hockey team mascot doesn't break character. All right. Do, like does a big mime of like putting his hand on his face and then <laughs> like, oh, I'm really scared. And then uh, like biting his nails. And then like as the emergency vehicles come, like there's sirens all of a sudden. And then oh my gosh. firefighters and ambulance and whatever. The hockey team mascot is like directing them as though he's like an air traffic controller, <laughs> like, go oh, this way. And I know the oh listeners can't God. see this, but you can imagine him just like yeah. miming these uh these actions. So hats off to local hockey team mascot. Uh so so a car just drove through and somebody was having a bad time, maybe had a, a medical emergency and they drove their car through a thing and that I don't understand what the accident was. At like sixty miles per hour, I don't know. What At if sixty it was miles in, an hour. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't that know if part it was I was intentional or okay, unintentional. I never got. Were, were they were they gunning for Ronald? And they're like, <laughs> I'm finally right. gonna get. Yeah, that. if you come for the king, you better you better not miss. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, well, you know, it sounds like the hockey local hockey mascot. That's because hockey is the only true sport, right? I like that neither of the mascots removed their heads, though. Oh yeah, none of them. Yeah. Even the one that sort of freaked yeah, they, out. I mean, they all stayed in costume. 
Yeah, that's great. Oh, okay. Yeah. So so it was a Ronald. It wasn't the Ronald McDonald. <laughs> yeah, I think the true Ronald would have you know, stayed and given French fries to the responders or something. That, but, that's all right. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to make a threat here. Ronald McDonald, <laughs> I'm calling you out, man. <laughs> I say you big pussy, man. I say you ain't got shit. If you want to fight me, Ronald McDonald, uh, you name a time, you name a place, not McDonald's. <laughs> neutral territory, neutral territory. Right. We go at it. He'll never step foot in a Burger King. That's not neutral territory. Yeah. The king will, uh, he'll rig it in, uh, in your favor, Grant, no matter what. Board games are boring. <laughs> oh, is that what this was about? Yeah, board games I are I thought boring. we were going to uh, uh, pivot and go like, okay, so Ronald McDonald has definitely played Sonic the Hedgehog, right? <laughs> Ooh, good question. <laughs> Good question. Well, so I had the McDonald's birthday train mm-hmm. toy, which featured Sonic and a Sega Genesis, if I remember correctly. Yes, that yeah. is correct. I had that yeah. too. I mean, Ronald's in that commercial, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. So we know, like, sure. Ronald was in the same frame as Sonic, so they've like hung out. Yeah, he's in the Shatterverse. He's <laughs> Ronald McDonald. That, that's what will happen <laughs> if they ever make season four. Was there a Genesis McDonald land game? Surely there sure was. was. It yeah. was made by Treasure. Yeah, it was great. Mm-hmm. I think it was called McDonald's Land, or it was like Treasure, whatever. I don't yeah, remember it, what it was called. But I do remember having fun with it on a rental and being very surprised by it. And then later talking about it with people like, do you remember a McDonald's game that was kind of shockingly good? And they're like, yeah, it was made by <laughs> Treasure. Right. And then you go on Wikipedia and you're like, huh, I'll be damned. Treasure Land Adventure. Treasure Land Adventure. Okay. Everyone says that's the good one because there are other McDonald's games out there. Uh, there's MC Kids. I remember that existing. I remember that too. Or Mick Kids, I guess is what it would be. I that always read it as MC Kids. Yeah. 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 I think it was in one of those uh, guidebooks I had. You know, uh, my mother was like, here's a guidebook that'll help you get through Sonic 2. And I'm like, do I need help? <laughs> I don't know. Do you remember that Xbox Burger King series of games? Oh, yeah. I got all three. You got all three, really? We, as we've established, as listeners know, David, it, if a fast food chain has some sort of promotion, they will collect <laughs> okay. that promotion. Okay. I get very excited. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I walked into the Burger King. I was like, I, I don't think I even ordered any food. I was just like, I need these three games. It was exciting. Because it was Xbox and 360. They worked on both. I heard one of those is pretty good. Sneak King was, I think, the star of the show. That was like, hey, he's sneaking around, hiding behind bushes. He's got to surprise people. Give give uh, the king is given off. Yeah, given burgers. Yeah, fries and, and and other Burger King excitement. The other two are, well, one is a racer, and I think one is another racer. (laughs) Like, yeah, yeah. Sneak King is the star. Sneak King. If you're gonna play one. Mm-hmm. You got to play sneaking. Um, David, what's your favorite fast food promotion all time? My favorite one of all time. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, it's definitely not the tiny tacos. I know that. <laughs> Ooh. Um, hmm. that, that's a good question. You know, you, I mean, are we, are we talking just like, like toys and giveaways or, well, you know, hmm, you know, I like collector glasses as much as the next guy. I guess the first thing that pops in my mind is, uh, I got really probably way more excited than I should have at the time when McDonald's did their Inspector Gadget promotion Ooh. because they had the 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 Happy Meal toy, the Matthew Broderick movie, the Matthew Broderick movie. There were, were there were like eight you know toys like they normally do, but each toy was a part of Inspector Gadget's body. And so it was like, oh, here's a an arm and it does an arm thing and a leg that does a leg thing. But if you got all the pieces and put it together, then you had this giant Matthew Broderick inspector gadget toy and i thought that was uh the neatest thing they all combined together i've never seen anything like that in a happy meal toy like i remember you know there's been some terrible fast food promotion toys where it's like this is nothing i mean if i lived in the uk i'd be depressed going to mcdonald's because you get cardboard and that's it you know what cardboard's good for it's it's good for recycling absolutely nothing yeah You want you want uh, a chunk of plastic that you can put on your shelf. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you know. Uh. <laughs> okay, I guess while we're here, it's worth thinking about mm-hmm. the fast food mascots because I think my answer to Bo's question would have been the Yo Noid uh, Domino's game for the <laughs> Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, uh, yeah, that's who could forget the was, Noid. Yeah, or perhaps Cool Spot. Yeah, I would have gone uh, Cool Spot. All right, Seven Up logo. And he wore sunglasses, and those were Sega Genesis. There were two 
Was mm-hmm. there, were there three? There was two. Spock goes to Hollywood and cool spot. All right. I guess I misinterpreted the question, I think. <laughs> I'm talking yeah, I think about... you interpreted it right. I'm, I'm just sort of pivoting right. and extrapolating outward. To, right. Cool like, spot. Talking about the mascots. Yeah. I remember having a lot of fun with cool spot, but recently I went back to it and about halfway through, I went, actually, this might not be a good game. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun at first. Like I, I was having a lot of fun. Yeah. You start off in, the, in that beach level and you're bouncing on those bubbles and you're like, oh yeah, we're having a good time. But then it gets like, really hard really fast and then there's a level where like the background is scrolling way too fast and you're going oh okay so if you're like most if you if you're prone to motion sickness this is when you you just throw up on your genesis (laughs) controller and you have to turn off the game i'm like that's that's not good i don't know why they did that so cool spot is like half of a good game i would say (laughs) and then it just tumbles into it, it doesn't yeah that's a pretty good summary of sonic heroes too Oh, <laughs> good, good opening level. Good opening, yeah. Kind of stumbles. Uh-huh. It's like half of a good game. Yeah, I, I can get behind that. I don't know if uh, that's true. Let me tell you where I'm at with Sonic Heroes. Yeah. Although, wait a minute. Are we, are we really done with the fast food mascots? I feel like we're, we're, we barely... There's a lot of... Should we talk? We were out, and you're, you're bringing us back in. I know. Right. I mean, we can, we can go save Heroes for another day if we would just want to talk fast food forever, you know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Well, you know, I mean that the re- one of the reasons that that is fine with me is because I still have yet to complete Sonic Heroes. Right. Despite a couple of weeks of earnestly trying, I am eighty eight percent through the Team Sonic campaign. I'm on Final Fortress. I keep game overing on the uh, the parts where the lasers shoot at you while you're grinding towards the fifth battleship or something like that. A little bit of Team Dark halfway through Team Rose. A little bit of Team Chaotix, the first two stages, first three stages, as a matter of fact, of Team Chaotix. And so I do have some observations and some feelings about it, but I know you both have played Sonic Heroes to completion. Mm -hmm. David probably at the time, Bo probably last year. Yeah, that's right. Because Sonic Heroes was the breaking point for both of us, I think. (laughs) We've talked about this before, where Sonic Heroes was like, it was like, that, that that was the original door closing on my sonic fandom it was the one-two punch of shuffle heroes for me yeah it was the one-two punch of losing sega as a hardware yeah console manufacturer and then the awful box art mm-hmm. and <laughs> what's crazy is i don't think that sonic and the mo- the character models look that bad in the game i kind of like them actually they look a little rubbery but it's not terrible well it's not great but it's not terrible as compared to the box art where they look like they look like bad McDonald's toys. Yeah, I don't like the box art at all. Right. Any of the renders. Like Sonic's, like, I guess... Sonic's mouth is horrible. Sonic's mouth is bad, but horrible. it's better than Shuffles. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the gums on Sonic Shuffles model. <laughs> Nightmare fuel, for sure. Yeah, I, di- I did beat it at the time. I did buy that was heroes or shuffle uh, sh- heroes. I also got shuffled at the time. Yeah, like I have never beat shovel. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I've beaten it, though. No, I never I played it. No, I, I played it. I I didn't beat it. It was shuffles <laughs> terrible. No, it's not shuffles terrible. So it's bad. shuffles just a trouble. Shuffles bad. You know, it's bad in certain ways. I'm sorry. I was getting distracted because I'm like, yeah, we could talk about heroes. I know you haven't finished it. Or if we want to get weird, we could just <laughs> go down this this list of Sonic the Hedgehog fast food items. We could combine the two together. Okay. We could talk about. I'm down with that because there was a Sonic Heroes promotion, wasn't there? Oh, there there? was a Sonic. Yeah. Yeah, let's list the ones we know. Okay, so there's the famous Mm -hmm. 1993 Sonic 3. Sonic 3, 3 one. That's the big one. You mentioned the McDonald's anniversary with the Sonic TV and Tails (laughs) scrolling. Yes. We just mentioned Sonic Heroes. Yeah. There's the ones with little LCD games. Are those adventure tie-ins no that that would have been heroes that's heroes okay oh that is heroes right there were there were a couple different waves of those the first one was like a sonic x sonic heroes you know oh, okay. a year that's of cool. sonic yeah. as a whole all sort of coming together and that was so good that they or so big that they did a second wave and then there's been some others i mean the the most recent one i, I guess they, there was a recent one in the uk with mcdonald's but over here in the states the sonic 2 film i guess was the last big sonic fast food promotion okay i'm definitely down for but how are you thinking like we're you're gonna guide us sort of through it we're gonna we're gonna guess fill in what we can you're gonna educate us on some of the other ones can i also just sort of say Mm -hmm. a few of my sonic heroes observations thus far and i'm curious if you guys think that these observations are opinions that will change based on your experience with the game so for like right now i don't think the game is that bad 
I, I think I said last week that if you can play Heroes, mm-hmm. you can play 06. 06 is easier. Heroes is hard. It's hard. It's a difficult game. I hear it only gets more difficult in the Team Dark campaign, but even just what I've played of Chaotix and Team Sonic, it's harder than Sonic Adventure. It's harder than Sonic Adventure 2. It is not the most difficult Sonic game, but it's pretty tricky. And the frustrating thing is the difficulty comes from uh, bottomless pits, kind of cheap deaths where you feel like probably you shouldn't have died, not being able to like grab a ring in time. You know, they're just deaths in a video game. And then, of course, there's it's an older video game, so there's not infinite lives like we're used to now. So <laughs> no. you do game over and you're like, I guess it's time to turn the thing off. But so far, I'm liking it. And one of the things that's really propelling me through the game is I actually really like the characterization. I like the, I like the characters. I like knuckles as part of team sonic i like the chaotix i think vector should have a hat maybe a stogie because he the the mc uh singer rapper dj that's coming through but the detective part is not coming through he needs a trench coat and a hat or at least just a hat Uh, but i'm kind of liking team chaotix for the first time um so i'm into it but i love it and i hate it because i wish i was done with it already (laughs) yeah i yeah to me it's just like a parade of kind of annoyingness Mm. core problem is that the controls are bad and the team mechanics are not fun to play it's pretty slippery and i'm mostly team speed yeah like okay well let's take that as a given then the level design after you know seaside hill is kind of not great like the the rail stages are just god awful the forest stage it's it's quite bad what's so bad about it though (laughs) I, i mean i feel like they're a bit repetitive i'll give you that and like there is a sense of deja vu with that rep- rep- repetition of like <laughs> wasn't i just here or yes, did i well, die and so there's there's a youtuber who will remain unnamed but uh they have a sizable audience and they they contend that no 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 see heroes level design is brilliant because they show you a thing and then you learn how to do the thing and then they show it to you again with a twist and then they show it to you again with another twist and then that's that's the thing and mm. i would say yeah great uh understood still not fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah it i mean it, oh, it just it it comes so clear when you realize that azuka basically had to do it by himself and almost yeah. died like that's when the whole copy pasting level design makes sense because it's like i just got to push this out and not die so for somebody to go actually this was brilliant on their part it's like no it, it was it was a survival technique on the <laughs> well, on... I, I can see kind of the oh i see what they're doing here like mm-hmm. in this little part your puzzle is you've got to knock this enemy over and then hit this one with the other attack and then that'll unlock the door yada yada, yada. okay great still not fun yeah <laughs> that's, well that's the, the, the core problem i feel like w- one of the things that's weighing on my mind is that i am n- I'm close to the end, but I'm not like I'm not even a fourth of the way through it. And knowing that I'm going to have to play all these stages again is sort of undermining what should be the feeling as I'm battling through Final Fortress. So I think maybe if the game had just been Team Sonic and then maybe you unlock the other ones as additional bonus content or I don't know. Maybe there was another way around it other than. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, on the other hand. The other, some of the other playstyles are kind of fun. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're not that fun. Well, they're not that you, different. Is the thing that you get three playstyles, and then you've got four teams right. with those same three playstyles, and the only team chaotic is slightly different in terms of the mission structure, mm-hmm. right? That's right. Yeah. Right. Have you thought about like instead of playing it the way the game seems to tell you, which is hey, you start with Sonic, then Dark, then Rose, then Chaotix? Have you thought about just beating the game first? as team rose because that is meant to be the easy mode like yeah they have the tutorial level they have seagate like when when i played it when i first got it and went through it yeah you play i played them third i beat all of sonic then i beat all right. of team dark i didn't need an introductory level so it always confused me because who isn't going to pick sonic first yeah. no one's it's gonna, very yeah. very yeah. weird mm-hmm. i guess there it it's like there is it's like when azuka and sonic team was making it they had like a one family in mind they're like well the little sister isn't going to play the game first so don't so you, the, the team rose wouldn't be first but you know she may watch the game and then want to play older brother's game mm-hmm. and then she'll get the tutorial from so i did play team rose first knowing that the tutorial was there and about 50 percent of the way through it but mostly i was more interested in the sonic play style 
I, I think there's like a core problem with it besides the team mechanics not good and the gameplay is not fun is they really tried to tackle the problem of what do we do about enemies in a 3D space? So are they one hit and you're done with them or is there a way to interact with them in a different way? And so they made it so, okay, they take multiple hits and it takes some thought about how you're going to defeat them. But it's all moot because the correct answer always, unless it forces you, is just ignore them and go past. Yeah, that's 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 mostly what I've been doing. I, I mentioned that I've mostly <laughs> been playing as the speed character, so I'm as much as possible dodging the combat because the combat is pretty tedious and not super fun. But speaking of the combat, thinking of Knuckles, I have a couple of Knuckles thoughts. Okay, one, as I mentioned before, I'm on board with Knuckles as as the team Sonic friend. I, I, I'm super on board with them as a trio. Now it's a quad with Amy, fast friends forever, but the three boys, the team Sonic, I like it. Why isn't Knuckles guarding the Master Emerald? We don't care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're all guarding it together. Sonic 2, the movie, <laughs> gave us this. We can take it. They're, they've got it. It's at the Wachowski's house. Oh. But the way that Knuckles glides in this did get me thinking about our conversation about how Knuckles glides. You know, is it his fists with the thor power or is it very racistly his dreadlocks that make him fly <laughs> well this game i mean it does sort of make you think that maybe it is the dreadlocks because of the way that you hover but it cannot be because if knuckles is by himself on on top of a fan well his dreadlocks are there but he's not getting blown any more than any other character is by this fan he's got to use his fists to connect with his buddies and guide them along as they're going in the triangle dive. So, that's right in the triangle dive. So I think it is basically a, the most I'll concede on the knuckles glide is that they work together, that he, he does trap some air under the locks, but he is also using the propulsive power of his elbows, his shoulders and his fists to fly through the air. The way that vector flies or glides with big <laughs> bubble gum makes no sense at all and is not canon. I refuse to accept that. Oh. Oh, there you I will go. say that the the robots I really disliked at the time. Look at all these Eggman's robots. They all just look like Eggman. They're all egg pawns. But now as I'm playing through it, I'm kind of vibing with it a little more. I'm like, I'm a little more on board with them. You know, they're not all like animal themed, but that's, yeah, that's a, they're just sort of like annoying robots that you have to run past or kill all of if you're Team Chaotix. I want to push through this game, and I should, right? I should finish it. I, I want to get to the Metal Overlord. I want to get to the songs. I have zero Chaos Emeralds, you guys. I have zero <laughs> Chaos Emeralds. All right, so you want to get the Chaos Emeralds as big, or as uh, Team Rose, because that's the, the only way to actually do it. Yeah. Oh, I thought you had to do it as like in a coordinated effort between the four teams. No. Nah. You can get them all as one team? Yeah. Thankfully. Yeah. Because yeah. um, other- otherwise you will you will hate yourself. Oh, that's a that's a given. <laughs> that's that that that's just that's part and parcel with being a Sonic fan or uh, involved in the Sonic being a friend of Sonic. I, I know you're not there yet, but kind of a big disappointment in the end of the game is all right it's we're all all the teams have come together we're gonna fight the metal overlord and oh all right it's the climax we just had a game where both sonic and shadow went super and you're thinking okay well this time sonic tails and knuckles will become super <laughs> and it's just sonic uh, yeah that is a bummer all right it should be at least one representative from each team right like it should be sonic shadow amy Aim. And then right. Espio, Super Espio. That seems I, <laughs> why not? He's just invisible. You can't see him. Ah, oh, yeah. There you go. Um. Okay. So let's go. Well, what else is there to talk about with heroes at the moment? Well, right. You haven't beaten it. I feel like I haven't beaten it. We we should. So those save are just some... my thoughts. I mean, you can. You. I mean, I'm spoiled on it. The game came out in two thousand. Four, five, three, three, three. 2003. De- December 03, Japan, January 04 in the US. Thank you. <laughs> best vocal theme? What's the best vocal theme in the game? Yeah. I like the Team Rose theme. I think I like, yeah, I think I like that one the most. I do kind of like the Team Chaotix theme. It sounds like a Saturday morning cartoon theme song, <laughs> but I like them. I like them all. Yeah, I, w- I would go Team Rose. Yeah. I used to play that in the car uh, when I was driving in the middle of the night to stay awake. You just put that on blast, start singing along. That's that's when I was cleaning, working late nights in empty office buildings. Can you remember sing, 
belting out those lyrics. Uh, yeah, well, what, like, uh, it sounded maybe a little bit something like, uh, what did it sound like, David? What did, what did it sound like? Uh, yeah. so, so, well, you know, what? Uh, in uh, <laughs> Wait, now I'm on the spot. All the sadness. We'll just slip away. We'll just slip away. Yeah, yeah, right. Let me see what I see. Anywhere you want to go, anywhere you need to show, let's all grow. Big, bu- I, <laughs> I don't quite remember yeah. all the words. Yeah, I used to learn work late nights uh, at an empty office building too. Mm-hmm. Working radio job in Ohio, would drive home at like three a.m. Yeah, very, very tired. Sometimes would almost hit an oncoming vehicle oh, and then man. pull away. It's always and then good. that terrifying moment. Right. Imagine almost getting in an accident and, you know, just hearing, whatever I want, <laughs> I get, <laughs> I want shooting. And then you're like, yeah, <laughs> good. Yeah. Yep. That's how I'd want to go, I think, ultimately. <laughs> just listening to the team roast. Yeah. Hey, maybe you'll be like Shadow. You know, somebody will find you, put you in a capsule, and uh, Rouge the Bat will wake you up. <laughs> i'm trying to remember so in the opening thing with shadow it's like there's just the, the line of identical shadows right it's like oh what happened to him after heroes and mm-hmm. is this the right shadow and, uh, did i ever tell you that shadow is a robot and it's like rouge it's not it's not what's going on here <laughs> I, oh you know i've seen i've seen some discourse online about shadow and what he should be and and things like in the sense that oh Heroes and Shadow introduce the idea of what if Shadow is an android? What if he's a robot? Because he's not the real Shadow. The real Shadow died. And, I, you know, I don't... If you're going to have Shadow, I feel like you should have the actual Shadow. I don't, I don't think I'm a fan of, oh, you have Shadow, but he's fake. Either you give me the real Shadow and we'll do, we deal with the fact that maybe he should have died at the end of SA2, or you just don't have Shadow at all. Having a fake Shadow running around the whole time, I don't know, there's just something about it that I'm not super into i think it's like an interesting concept of like not only are these not my memories i'm not even the only one with these memories and then you know they do nothing with it yeah yeah i like i I like the way that it sort of uh i actually haven't gotten to that point in the game myself but i am aware of this plot point and i like the way that it sort of similar to the mysteries in sonic adventure 2 it just kind of makes you scratch your chin a little bit of like yeah what if and then the game seemingly doesn't follow it up in any way i think i mentioned also that i'm i I have played through one of the endings of shadow which seems to go along with sonic heroes so i'm seeking the answers for shadow's true origin myself with black doom i want to finish this before the movies come out and sooner than that even but is that at the end of the team shadow storyline that that's revealed or is that like yeah midway through the campaign as the end yeah it's at the end although it was leaked before the game was released oh another random <laughs> observation here uh-huh all all respect to the many voice actors that tails has had but i really like when it's an actual kid we've talked about this on the podcast before but hearing the actual kid doing the voice for tails it's it's uh it's great cuz it makes him sound like an idiot you know he's a, he's a dumb kid and then he says, like, oh, the, the, I think the computer says that the thing. It's like, yeah, you're a dumb baby. It's funnier <laughs> when it's that way. Yeah. Just, just go back to kids. You know, like like Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown's always a kid, right? He's been a kid. Sure. They always hire a new kid. They're like, yeah, yeah, the, the actor hit puberty. We got to get a new Charlie Brown. <laughs> this contract has an expiration date, kid. Like, the, the modern tales, as voiced by Colleen, is great. But he sounds like a little older, I guess, a little wiser. And I want, I, yeah. I'm realizing what really helps me like Tails is if he's the dumb kid brother. Yeah. And Knuckles is Sonic's best friend, as he says in the OVA. Uh-huh. He's Sonic's equal. So that makes sense. And then the three of them have like a, a dynamic that kind of works. I see it. All right. Right, Sonic and Knuckles adopt Tails. And, uh... If Tails is like, sometimes he behaves like he's older than Sonic. A little bit like he's like uh sonic you you got sometimes especially in the comics i feel like tails will will talk to sonic like he's the dumb one because tails is technically smarter but it's still like yeah you may be technically smarter point dexter (laughs) but you're still canonically eight years old so be quiet yeah i i'm i'm all for tails being a kid even if he's a smart kid he should still just be a kid like let's not make him seem like he's 27 hey and you know the 90s shows 
those are kids being tails. Yep. Two different kids. Yeah. They hired two different kids. Same Sonic, different tails. Yeah. So you knew they were different universes. <laughs> you don't think Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog is in the same universe as Sad AM, even though he calls himself a freedom fighter and Princess Sally appears in Sonic Christmas Blast? Uh, I, that, that's, um, I think there's some arguments you could make about whether or not Sonic Christmas Blast, like, is that part of the standard AOSTH continuity? Is that its own separate? Because it does play with ideas. It, it's sort of that weird middle ground, again, just like yeah. the pilot of Sad AM is a weird middle ground. Although I guess if we're, if we're going to force them into any continuity, you shove Christmas Blast, of course, in the AOSTH because it is robotic and scratch and grounder. And the, the pilot, yeah, Sally's pink. Who cares? I guess it's fine. Yeah. But, you know, if you want to get really weird about it, yeah, you could say that they don't work. Yeah. I mean, the, the Robotniks are very different. The worlds are very different. Like, it, they don't totally mm -hmm. co-mingle. There's a reason that they were separated um, into two different shows. Uh, the other thing I'll say about the voice actors is I like them all in Sonic Heroes. I this is the adventure cast, right? This is still Ryan Drummond for Sonic. Yeah. Is that right? It seems like in Sonic Heroes they got a slight bit more context for their lines. Because <laughs> in Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2, and I think they've said this, but you get the sense that they recorded each line in a complete vacuum of having no idea if they were having a conversation with somebody or anything. Well, and they kind of copied and pasted them in different places too. Like, he's not going to get away with this is used in a couple scenarios. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. It's, um, it's a different Knuckles, though. I think they... Or at least it's different Knuckles from Adventure 1 Knuckles. Uh, really? Michael McGarren is in Adventure 1, but I don't remember. Yeah, like they they swapped out because tech, uh, in Shuffle, Knuckles is Ryan Drummond, right? Like Pulling double duty? He was pulling double duty, and then uh, people at Sega Japan were like, you can't do that again, mm. which is funny because then a few years later, Roger Craig Smith was like half the cast. Or not Roger Craig Smith, I mean Jason Griffith, sorry. <laughs> A lot of good lines in Sonic Heroes. We did some of them up top. What are what are some of your guys' favorite lines in the game? Oh boy, I feel like I'm always in for the Eggman ones. Yeah, actually, I just like the voice acting for Eggman. <laughs> yeah, and that is uh, that's um, uh, his first one, right, Deem Bristow? Yeah, yeah. You're not gonna get away with this. That was like what you just said in Adventure. Was it? But was he saying Sonic Heroes? He's like, oh, those were the easy ones. Those were the <laughs> Oh yeah, how's he say? That? He's all right, boys. Those are the easy ones. Like yeah. boys is in there. It's really good. Yeah, <laughs> he really over pronounces easy though. Those were the easy ones. Oh man, I kind of, I wish he'd uh, stuck around. I mean, stuck around in general. You know, like <laughs> oh, is he no longer with us? Oh yeah, he, yeah, died. he died. Right? Oh. Yeah. He died after Heroes. Oh, like, they were forced to recast no matter what. I didn't know that. It's like it just went late. Or, well, yeah. Other than that, I kind of feel like it would have been nice to have that long term continuity like the Japanese cast has with. Yeah. And we could, this is a topic that we've danced around, but haven't gotten into. We could do this at some future point of just talking about the voice actors. I think maybe we have we done that kind of ranking them or talking about them. Kind of on the animated show episodes we've touched on. Yeah, that's right. Right. You're right. We haven't, I guess we haven't gone all out like, hey, you know, where are you going to put the sonic who is uh in uh sonic patrol car where does he rank oh uh, yeah yeah <laughs> there's a lot of talking sonics the uh I, I guess it's the same guy who did it in the commercial sonic one commercial with the proto death egg or whatever you want to call it uh, yeah there's uh the sonic in in cd he's got like sure. three words he says three words i'm out of here yeah yep <laughs> there's the three words yeah there's something about the drummond's just the tone of his voice, the, just the way it sounds. And mm -hmm. it just, he sounds, and I mean this really in a nice way, in a good way, that uh, he sounds annoying a little bit. <laughs> and I think in the right way that Sonic should be. Sonic should be like a little, I'm out of here. Ah, Eggman, he's a little bit. Mm, mm. Just yeah. should be a little bit of that. Ryan Drummond, I think he was, if he if he had better direction, as in he knew he was actually talking to a person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you, I can also, I mean, it's very easy to see where the second actor, Jason Griffith. Mm -hmm. I can see why that guy has a lot of fans because his, I've been playing a bit of Black Knight after hearing so many of like Gen Z say how the game is so great. And I skipped over that one. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of trying to fill in all my gaps, which were that sort of mid aughts period. But 06 and Black Knight 
and he's unleashed too. Yes. And Sonic X, but that's beside the point. But he's he's got a really good like gra- you know version of the character and sort of a tonal quality that I find very appealing. And this is not to say that I dislike the Roger Craig Smith or other versions, just that I can see why these two really stick around in the cultural Sonic memory. Because see, I, do... I don't like Griffith because his his Sonic seems too reasonable. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like Drummonds and Roger Craig Smiths feel like they get the brashness of the character, like. They're not going to sit around and try to hash this out. They're going to, they want to go fast. Yeah. I can see. That's kind of my issue with the Roger Craig Smith ones is he seems like too wise, too, too smart. Like he, he's, he's too old. So, something about it's like, <laughs> In it's front because he's a really yeah. good actor. I think like, yeah. I think because, and, and some of that actorness comes across a little bit, like each line is delivered correctly. You know what I mean? Like the words that are enunciated in Roger Craig Smith's dialogue are the ones that the writer intended to be enunciated in a certain <laughs> way. But the previous actors were not necessarily always following those rules. So we got to bring back Ryan Drummond is what you're saying. Well, and, and I'll and never tell him what any of these lines mean. Just be like, <laughs> I don't think there's any going back. I, I, I think the cast that they have now is great. Keep them going. I'm, I'm just saying that, like, if you could go back in time, maybe don't change it at all, because there's there's some good stuff here or maybe i'm just saying that each era is worthy in its own way not necessarily trying to say that one is even better than the other just that i like i like them yeah if if four kids hadn't dubbed sonic x if it, if it was some other company then like the voice cast would have been completely different no matter what like if sega really was like oh we need for some reason vocal continuity is that why they changed it they changed it for sonic x because of four uh, kids yeah, I mean, Sonic X, I mean, they, they started dubbing Sonic X before Sega went, okay, you're all the new English Game Voice cast. I guess I, it, it's also because it's something about unions, as in... <laughs> Sega doesn't hire union actors. They don't hire union <laughs> actors, wow. and the four kids cast are not union, and the previous cast was. I guess when Ryan Drummond tried to get the, the part again, uh, when, when the four kids cast was like, go. Oh, uh, he's he's commented, oh, I, I tried out again for the part of Sonic. And they were like, oh, yeah, you know, maybe we can bring you back as Sonic. But he would have had to given up, uh, give up his union card. And he's like, no, I won't do that. Wow. So instead you get Roger Greg Smith. So we could have we could have gone back. The actors are non-union that they use. Like, they... Well, I think in the late 90s, early 2000s games aren't. But I'm sure Roger Greg Smith now is. I was going to say, like, the modern cast has to be, right? There's yeah, no they're pros. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. When all that happened, that was like in, what, 2009, 2010, when the, when the current cast started, it was probably different things. It was. I just know he tried out to get Sonic back, and then they said no. And people have taken that story and misinterpreted it like, oh, he tried out for generations. He was going to be advent or he was going to be adventure Sonic, but there was never a third Sonic in that game. Oh. It, was, it was something like that. Would it be weird if classic Sonic started talking after he's been pantomiming for so long? Because he, he talks in the uh, comics. I would only accept it if it was Julia White. Yeah, I think Julia White is like the slam dunk choice. Like, absolutely. If not Jaleel White himself, then somebody that is oh, like doing it Jaleel very White. much yeah. evoking that, yeah, would be would be right. But I would still welcome it because he talks in the comics, classic Sonic, and he freaking has classic tales and classic Eggman talking. So why can't classic Sonic? That makes no sense. Sega, fix that shit. I'm, I was trying to look at very quickly. Like, wait, is he part of a union? Or am I am I misremembering? Was it the other way around? Was it the four kids cast? Am I mixing my two stories together? I would guess the adventure cast was not. Well, the adventure, I thought the adventure cast was like the reason Ryan Drummond didn't stay is because I think the four kids cast, like or maybe it was like a different union or I don't. Four kids was non-union. I know that much. And Ryan Drummond was, he, he's got his union card. Right. I believe that. But like Burning Rangers, US dub, the actor who does Knuckles and Adventure is read mm-hmm. and from burning rangers and they're not even credited and that's presumably because they didn't hire union actors and they just got them in a studio one day and had a right. all the lines well i mean ryan drummond has done other things although you know jason griffith he did stuff like yeah they're actors they do things he was in <laughs> right he was he was in that one condom commercial right and uh <laughs> what 
Yeah, you know. No, I don't know. You don't know. Trojan Man commercials? I I remember those. Uh, What? No, it was, um, God, what was it? Let me just search his name and the word condom. Trojan Man. Was was it a Trojan commercial? It's, uh. I don't know. What other condoms advertise? I I mean, there there are different brands. There's like, uh. I'm aware there's different brands, but I don't think they're all uh, advertising. (laughs) They're all just riding the coattails. He's riding. While David is looking this up, Bo, let's let's chew on this. There's four teams in Sonic Heroes, and McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Taco Bell. Would uh, would you agree that those are the four main fast food outlets in the United States, or do you think I'm... Um, see, I grew up in a place where like there was more of a Hardee's okay. slash Girls Jr. representation than there was Taco Bell representation. Okay. And then I think Don't Sleep on Dairy Queen. Um... Okay. Uh, Hardee's is pretty niche. I got to say, even even Carl's Jr. out here in L.A., it's relatively niche. And yeah, Dairy Queen, I'll, I'll give you Dairy Queen. Okay, but my main question to you is, what Sonic team makes sense to be mascot for which fast food chain? Uh, okay, Team Sonic McDonald's, I think. That's that's a given. Team Rose, I'm going to put them in. Uh, it goes, I'm going to zag here. They're going to go Jack in the Box. Burger King, Team Chaotix, Self-Explanatory, and Team Dark is Taco Bell. It's just that easy, folks. Eggman is in White Castle. Oh. <laughs> All right. It's just that easy. That's, that is that is canon now. And you'll note that the Sonic drive-in, not represented. Not represented because they have declined this opportunity seemingly repeatedly <laughs> to their destruction. Even their logo does kind of look like the Set AM logo. It does. I'm going to be honest. Uh, Sonic drive-in burgers are not that great. Oh yeah. Every no, time I get good. one, I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. And I eat it. And I'm like, no, it's not. You go there for drinks and you go there for breakfast. You never go there for burgers. And I guess you also go there occasionally for the chili dog, the Coney dog. It's not a proper Coney dog. I mean, yeah, that that especially seems like how are you not teaming with Sonic the Hedgehog for your chili dog promotion? Yeah, I had to eat one of the burgers recently and probably had not done so in 25 years but went with family older son ordered the hamburger and was upset that there were pickles on it and so i had to trade him so (laughs) it was okay well you know as he gets older he'll learn to enjoy uh sliced pickles on a burger oh i never did so what (laughs) you don't like pickles on a burger forever what about like a chicken sandwich at least no or no no you don't like pickles at all no man not at all oh Oh, oh my goodness. Pickles are great. Professor Pickle and his yeah. cucumber sandwiches. <laughs> right. He doesn't eat pickles. He eats cucumbers. How strange. How ironic. Yes. How <laughs> ironic. I remember that my preferred McDonald's meal for a long time, even still now, I still kind of like a cheeseburger plain. Huh. Plain? What? With just cheese, the meat, the bread. That's it. Wow. No special sauce. No mm-hmm. special sauce. No fucking nothing. Right. Like a fucking psycho. Well, it's kind of nice. Uh, how old were you? Um, old enough to know better. Uh, I don't know. How old was I in 93? I was eight, nine. Hey, no, that, that, that right. doesn't seem I, that why weird. Why can't I do math? Uh, I was seven. Okay, that doesn't seem weird. Because when I was a kid, I also was sauce adverse. Mm-hmm. So if I would get a hamburger, I wouldn't want ketchup. I wouldn't want mayo or mo- or anything. It was just... The, right, the meat and the, and the cheese, and, and I guess I was okay with, like, onions or whatever else they might throw on there. But I guess, a, like, a regular McDonald's cheeseburger, they don't, I think it's what? They put a couple pickles on it and some ketchup, and so I'm like, I don't want the ketchup. So I guess it was, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I remember one time I, I was uh, in a car with my friend, and their mother was like, oh, we're going to go through McDonald's. Uh, what do you want? And I said, the the cheeseburger Happy Meal or whatever. But I was too afraid to then go into the details about like, well, but I can't have this and I can't have that. <laughs> so I just bit my lip because I'm like, that's not my mother. That's just someone's mother. She might yeah. say no. So I was forced to eat the ketchup. And that's when I went, oh, I guess this isn't too bad. You know? Yeah. Well, this story has a happy ending. It, do- it does. I'm right. so glad the listeners got to experience our That's right. Fast food. I feel like we, this... we did bring it back to fast food. Yes, we did. This also, I think, recently happened to me uh, with cottage cheese. I was cottage cheese adverse yeah. for the longest time. Then I finally had tried it again and went, oh, wait, this is actually pretty good. So I don't know why I was so against. Well, I, I think it's because I tried it 
And I just remembered the texture being weird and gloopy and wrong. And I'm like, I never want to put this in my mouth again. But, you know, at some point, you got to try it again. So this is what I'm going to say to all the listeners out there. If you've tried something and you didn't like it, and it's been a few years, you should try it again. Kind of the way Grant's doing with Sonic Heroes. Right. (laughs) Unless, of course, you're allergic to it. We don't want anyone, uh, you know, to... (laughs) have to rush to the emergency room because they went, I'm going to try having that peanut butter again. And they take a big bite and go, now I can't breathe. So did Azuka go to the emergency room when he was programming <laughs> Sonic Heroes? Probably should. He went to the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was dehydrated. Yeah, he, he needed to drink to, to drink some Sonic drinks, uh, like a, a strawberry watermelon slush. That's what I agree. Have you guys tried those Sonic energy drinks? There's like a peach one. They're at gas stations and stuff. The G Fuel? I don't want to. I don't want. Yeah. Peach energy? No. No. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Right. I No. I stopped having energy drinks back in 2020 and I haven't touched it again. So nice. But I'm always tempted because it's got Sonic on the can and I'm a sucker for Sonic the Hedgehog. (laughs) I like Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't know if the listeners have understood this quite clearly, but Sonic the Hedgehog is a neat character. He is pretty neat. He's blue. He's cool. Just like the planet. (laughs) And and Jason Griffith always wears a condom. and He's going to have sex. That's what... (laughs) What? Well, I was looking at the commercial. That's what he says. I always wear a condom before. <laughs> it's not for any brand. It's just for condoms in oh, general. It's like a PSA. It's, oh, it's a PSA. It's okay. for safe sex. He's like, that makes we sense. love safe sex here. Like we're hooking up at a wedding, but I need to slide on some protection. And I use this. And I, <laughs> I don't know. Do that before you visit Rail Canyon. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> condoms, they're ring shaped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, would that mean they just like always get absorbed? So he puts one on. He's like, "Whoa, yep. <laughs> better put on another one." <laughs> oh no, <laughs> better put on another one. Whoa! Well, the listeners <laughs> made it through the Beatles episode and <laughs> thought, "Oh, you're going to st- yes. steer back." <laughs> we are grateful for you, dear listeners. <laughs> yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. We appreciate you coming right. on for the ride. Yeah, let me let me do this quick. If you somehow got through this please uh you know subscribe on your podcatcher of choice apple podcast spotify uh podcast addict yeah uh we got the youtube it's at sonic dash weekly those get uploaded with some fancy gameplay from a guy who plays games he's a he's jack of old games jack. he's, he's jack of old in the description games. that's right hey if you want to email us sonic weekly podcast at gmail.com uh, we have a very inactive Twitter at Sonic Weekly. We have a Discord. Email us to get the link to that Discord. Thank you, Smoothies, for the edit. Thank you, Bo, for being in orbit around Saturn. And and thank you, Grant, for playing Sonic Heroes. Thank you, David. Thanks, thank David. you, Bo. <laughs> thank you, Smoothies. Thank you, listener. <laughs>